Thank you, Tristan. At least you didn't call my hair yellow. <laughs> Remember that one time Brent said I had yellow hair? It was very funny. I found it quite hilarious. But yes, well, I suppose may tenure in our hair's oh his mane is maybe similar to mine i think it's slightly messier he doesn't put a brush through it of course although sometimes i can't even get a brush through my hair it gets like a bird's nest but wasn't that amazing just before we sent you across to james now sebastian and i've been discussing it quite a bit now um since you've left us when he turned and looked up towards the sky how did he know that those vultures were up there? Because those vultures were far away. They were just black dots in the sky to Sebastian and I. Did he hear them? Because he had his eyes closed. Or did he just open one of them and happen to spot that dot in the very far distance? Because it was absolutely incredible, the response that he had. And cats often do that. Cats will use birds to try and find food and vice versa. Vultures will search for predators to try and find their next meal too. Perhaps they've already flown past him today and realize that he hasn't got a kill nearby or that he's just hiding it very well we know that he doesn't have a kill but remember we often see the big cats dragging carcasses and hiding them underneath trees or if you're a leopard you'll hide it in a tree that has lots of leaves to conceal it from the vultures but they've all moved off now they've gone into a different area and also that those vultures are able to see so well from as far up in the sky as what they were but it's, it's quite warm now. The breeze that we started uh, getting this morning has com almost completely died down now. There's uh, just the grass is slightly moving. And it is nice. It's a little bit cool. But I think he's going to rest for quite some time. I think Sebastian said he's going to start moving at about 5 o'clock. I reckon around 4.30 we might get some yawns and grooming. But we have a question from Jeffa, and the question is, do lion coalitions add another member to the coalition when one of them dies? Uh, not necessarily, however, I have, and actually I don't think, it's not very common at all to replace a member. And remember the Birminghams at one point used to be five, but unfortunately one of them succumbed to a buffalo injury and passed on, leaving just the four of them, and they haven't found a replacement, though... A replacement is not necessary is not necessary. He's looking at the vultures again, but again you won't be able to see them. They're just they're straight above the camera, which is virtually impossible to get. But what I have seen, which is quite interesting, and I've told the story before, when I was guiding down in the southern sector of the sands, there were two old male lions that were, I suppose, in their retirement years, just as Mvula is in. They weren't really marking territories anymore, they'd occasionally roar but they weren't interested in, in finding some females. They were well past that. They couldn't compete with the younger males in the area. And what they ended up doing, these two males, they aren't related at all, joined up, which I thought was quite interesting. And at a late age, I mean, the one was about 12 and the other male must have been about 10 years old. And within a couple of months, we started to see them hanging around together. Then they were inseparable. So how amazing is that? They're two males from completely different walks of life sort of their paths joined and they decided well we're getting old now we're not interested in the ladies it's easier to hunt if there's two of us why don't we just join up and that's exactly what they did they eventually disappeared and i think they went into um kruger around the paul kruger gate and i haven't heard of them or seen any pictures of them since so perhaps they passed on they were quite old though too like i said but 10 and 12 that's sort of the end uh, of the life expectancy of a male lion but as this boy sits here and pants away he's not just panting he is he, well we're unfortunately sitting downwind of him too so you can imagine the smells that arise every now and then it's um i don't know if it's actually the lion or sebastian's just blaming tenure <laughs> if it would be me then please always, take me to the hospital <laughs> <laughs> or is it me yeah exactly seb says if it was him he needs to be rushed to the emergency yeah. room yeah, this, it, sounds, it smells like your intestines are rotting. But that's what happens when you feed on a, a diet of p just protein. And for any of you that perhaps have young sons that are into gymming and need to supplement their diet with protein shakes, you will know then um, what your sons, or maybe you are just at the gym, you'll know exactly what your flatulence smell like. It's not particularly pleasant. And it's not pleasant with the lion either. Now, an interesting question, and hopefully Tenure will open his mouth for this one. It's from Martin, all the way in, in Texas. 
and it is do lions get food stuck in their teeth i'm sure oh my goodness he stinks <laughs> that was a bad one hey sam yes. sure my goodness i'm gonna have to get a mask on or something or at least uh, maybe hold a nice smelling flower to my nose while we sit here sorry martin <laughs> we will um we will of course not have to worry about that but maybe we'll reposition at some point and so sorry martin and um, so i'm sure they do they've obviously got teeth that specialize in cutting the flesh and then they're sort of able to tear it and and swallow it so i'm sure to an extent they get all types of things stuck in their teeth but i don't think it bothers them as much as it bothers us as humans i mean that's the first, we always put toothpicks out of the table before you go to bed at night you floss your teeth well you should be flossing your teeth if there are any children watching you must remember to floss your teeth otherwise the tooth fairy or the tooth mouse won't come and visit you and uh, just Yes, <laughs> digressed severely there, but um, yeah. So it's very, it's import very important for us, but for them, it's not necessarily the case at all. They're right. Now he's staring at me every time I move. Maybe he's admiring my long ponytail. Mm -hmm. now, I don't have a door, so if I do shuffle, he can see these movements. So it's not like I'm completely concealed. I'm not standing up and breaking the silhouette. But remember, the way that a lion's eyesight is designed is they pick up the slightest movement very easily so even the way that I talk with my hands I often have to watch myself when I'm in a cat sighting and put my hands under my arms or I have to sit on them otherwise they do start watching I've had it before where I was talking and I was so excited and my tracker said to me Mafazi he always used to call me Mafazi which is uh, it means woman but when the Shangani men say it to you it's like a term of endearment they don't mean it in a disrespectful way at all and he says Mafazi watch your hands so I'm like oh what are you talking about and this female line from the southern pride was just going like this she was sitting quite a distance away she was just following me she was just oh, that's very interesting whatever I'm doing with my hands so it's always always important to make sure that you're not uh, that you are careful but he doesn't seem to be bothered by us barring when he stares up at the the vultures that are flying ahead he looks down at us oh he looks across at us but he's more worried about catching some z's this afternoon and and i'm sure he's hoping that that uncomfortable full feeling will disappear i've always wondered and this is obviously something that we can't tell we can't ask a lion we we, we can't really communicate with them at all but you know what happens when you overeat often it ends up in a stomach ache and i wonder if they at any point in their life also get severe cramps from overindulging what do you think seb or do you think that they're just so used to eating like that that that's their the way that it's nothing no more do you think they're used to it mm. yeah just didn't always think about these things is obviously i try and think how i feel after a big meal and i go Phew. I had a belly that size. That's like eating the entire turkey at Christmas yourself with all the sides, with the roast potatoes and the pumpkin and anything else that you like to have with it. He's had it all. He's had a five course meal for five people, but he's eaten it just himself. That's what he looks like at the moment. There seems to be also a few more flies buzzing about today. He's twitching his ears, his tail is moving quite vigorously. He's not enjoying them. Now, Jonathan, who's only 11 years old all the way from Alabama, you're wondering, what do I think this lion would do if I were to walk up towards him? Well, Jonathan, if I were to step out of the car right now, he'd get up and he'd run away. I'm almost certain about that. Look, he's going to do a big rollover now. And the reason for this, because first I'm going to give him a fright. Oh, that smells so terrible. <laughs> We need smell -a vision That needs to be created because then it will be a more real-life safari, don't you think? Imagine sitting at your computer getting these smells. It would be wonderful. Um, so, so he would run away and if I maybe came from a distance, say I was doing a bushwalk with guests or I was out with, track, uh, with Herbie and we were tracking and we were walking about, it, he'd probably also get up and move slightly or he might start growling at us. He won't just attack you. He will tell you if he's unhappy with you, but if you're going to give a lion a fright, they're just like a normal house cat. They, they will jump up and, and rush away. So I'm not too worried about that. But you should never just walk up to a lion, especially a wild lion, any lion. It doesn't matter if it's tame, in inverted commas, because I don't think there's any such thing as a tame lion or a tame tiger or leopard. I think these animals you aren't able to domesticate. Isn't that beautiful? So rather don't walk up to an animal. That's why we've got the cars and they're habituated to the vehicles. So that means 
that they're used to us they don't see us as food when you look at me like that though surely you don't have room for sebastian and i in that belly of yours his skin can only stretch so much and i reckon that it's at the maximum stretching point now but lying on your back like that that probably relieves some sort of uh, or provides some comfort i know that's the first thing that we do you undo the top button of your pants loose in your belt and you lay on your back on the couch and then you fall asleep after a big meal but he's not a small lion i really did forget how big these lions can honestly get it's a very humbling experience i always talk about being uh, feeling humbled around elephants but you feel small and helpless when you're sitting only a couple of meters away from the greatest cat in africa well we'll stay with him for a little bit longer maybe he does another rollover or perhaps he twitches his ears very exciting we're going to send you across now to tristan who's on the search for leopards I am indeed, and I've lost my wavy lock.